So as Bernie mentioned, my name is Chelsea Monaco. I oversee e-retail and commerce media at Merkle. Um, so Janine walked us through these four key themes in the room over there, and we really wanted to focus on one in three here. So um, innovation being the number one concern, and really what does that mean from a retailer and a brand perspective? And then the second on, or on data monetization and insights and how we can kind of capitalize on this trend that we're seeing in the industry. Um, so Janine walked through the new e-retail landscape of course, very complex. We're seeing this evolve, um, and everyone in this room is involved in this in one way or another. So what we really wanted to do here is open it up for discussion, actually, because I read this, and you know, working with brands, obviously Amazon continues to dominate, and we don't see that going away. Um, but we're really seeing pharmacy, grocery, department stores, and others changing the charts. And I think this was happening before the pandemic, and the pandemic absolutely accelerated that trend. Um, but, you know, we're also starting to see people spend off Amazon just as much as on Amazon, but Amazon's not going away. So just kind of wanted to highlight um, that, that 85% surveyed are still on Amazon. And when we're thinking about retailers, we really wanted to outline the monetization solutions. So Mike was mentioning around the fact of not even being with media buying and a media retail network capacity. So. Again, thought this was really interesting that this data monetization without media is continuing to grow. And we think there's a huge opportunity for brands and retailers to partner together and figure out where we can have that first party data sharing. Um, really see that being a trend. And I know from the brand side and the buy side, that's something that uh, brands are really looking to capitalize on um, from a retailer perspective. And then self-serve and transparency being two key themes here as well. So. Um, you know, being on the buy side, brands are always saying we really want to work with a retailer that has a self-serve option. Um, so we're continuing to see that trend. And, and I know that space has really evolved in this landscape and the number of self-serve options that are now available, which is fantastic. And of course, transparency in this connection of first party data, you know, really want to make sure that um, the reporting and the transparent solutions, we've seen a lot of evolution in that space as well. And is clear that it's coming through in the research on what the brands are looking for out of their retailer partner. Um, and what we're seeing here is more than half of the brands believe that retail media networks can add more value by providing data and insights with media buying optional. So again, this theme keeps coming up. Um, so non-endemic being a huge opportunity, we really want to focus on that in a couple of slides here on, on what that could mean from a retailer perspective. Um, Janine touched on the international component. Um, going to go into a little more detail on this. So actually starting with the US. So when we're thinking about media innovation, you know, the US is the most advanced and probably the fastest moving in this space. So the number one concern really is on that competition and where we see these um, new retail media networks continue to evolve and appear. Uh, building out new ad solutions, and then, of course, scaling the team to meet demand. Um, but when you're thinking about Canada and the UK, as it relates to more privacy regulations and um, different things they have to think about within that market with GDPR, we're also seeing that new ad solutions and just keeping up with innovation is really a focus. They're not in the competitive landscape that we're seeing in the US. They're definitely moving in that direction. Um, but there's a great opportunity from a global retailer and a global brand perspective on where can we take learnings from the U.S. and scale that across um, in other markets or if we can have non-endemic opportunities um, now that we're seeing this growth internationally. And for building partnerships for success from the brand side, again, they're really looking to work with easy they're looking for partners that are easy to work with. Um, so I think that's a really key highlight. In the last three years of research, this was always the number one um, element that they're looking for. Uh, Self-serve, of course, is always um, another component. But when we're thinking about what the future looks like for a retail media network and your features, you know, three years ago, this was very much based on, do you have a sponsored placement? Can I do keyword search? And you can see here, just based on the varying numbers of answers, it's really expand past that. So it's less around activation of your media and more around how can I be a true business partner with this retailer media network and how can I accelerate what my brand experience with that shopper is. 
And this one for me was really interesting. So again, I'd love any perspectives. Um, when we're thinking about internationally and how to evolve and build your retail media networks, the question is, do we build it, do we buy it, or do we partner with someone to do it? Um, so you can see here the, the top chart on the left is US and then UK and Canada. And from a US perspective, and I think part of the challenge with the competitive landscape and where we've seen all this growth is they're really focusing on buying or partnering. Um, capitalizing on where we can find synergies from a first party data perspective, understanding your shopper and where that growth is coming from. Where the UK and Canada is more around building their own offering. So um, just something to kind of think about and, and as we're thinking about non-endemic space and what Mike was talking about with Tip of the Iceberg and where we see this moving partnerships and finding successful partnerships across the retailer landscape or with a brand and retailer and co-mingling their data or their offering is a really interesting opportunity that we're seeing um, from a buying and partnership perspective. And uh, retailers here are most integrated, are most interested in straightforward implementation and cost effectiveness. So the top factor here when we're thinking about technology partner and who we want to work with is ease of implementation. So, you know, technology partners um, are really meant to make all of our lives easier, and they're fantastic in that way. Um, so ease of implementation is definitely number one. But what we're also seeing is there's a lot of elements around effectiveness and measurement and also efficiencies. So from an account management perspective, where can you have that uh, efficiencies within your activation and buying? And also from a data monetization perspective, where can we get more efficient from a first-party data um, commingling? And then this one for me um, was also really interesting. So of all the partners we surveyed from monetization, nearly three quarters of the partners are working with Google. Um, so Google's actually going to be presenting here uh, this afternoon so they can go into more details on what this looks like. Um, but again, if there's any call out here from anyone in the crowd, um, I just thought it was interesting that you know Google is still the dominating factor, but there's all of these new partners from a monetization perspective that didn't exist three years ago and, and really see this continuing to expand. Um, and then we've talked about non-endemic a lot. So over the past 18 months, we've really seen the non-endemic offering mature. So 81% of US retailers are working with non-endemic brands and another 4% are thinking that they want to expand into this in the future. So you know, 85% of who we're talking about is really focusing on non-endemic and how do I accelerate connecting with that shopper even if I don't have that on that specific retailer offering. And when we're thinking about taking advantage of the data of a retail media network in this non-endemic space, nearly half of the brands are doing this. So, you know, we're seeing here, um, the questions for me were pretty interesting where they're asking, do you take advantage? In the US, it's about half. Um, you can see the UK and Canada are a little behind there. Um, and then there's also a great opportunity for, to talk to brands and kind of accelerate what this means from a retailer perspective and kind of be a first mover if you're not thinking about this in this space. And then the last couple slides here around measuring success. Um, this one was very interesting for me from an agency perspective where um, despite having you know, very sophisticated marketing mix models and trying to have more closed loop measurement solutions, we're actually seeing that 37% of brands are not comparing their performance across retail media networks. So huge opportunity from a measurement analytics perspective. Um, Steve and Karina are gonna go into more details around what that looks like for data monetization. Um, and then also if you're working with an agency, a lot of them, you can see 61%, the agency handles the analytics. But again, I think there's a really big opportunity here on how we can further measure success and identify what that true shopper journey looks like across the retailers versus just showcasing versus just featuring a return on ad spend, for example. On the last bullet point there, we work with multiple retail media networks, but do not compare performance. Yes. Do you have any thoughts on why that is? That seems awfully low. Um, from, from my perspective, for a brand, um, a lot of times it's based on their organizational structure. So you'll have a key account manager that would be solely responsible for a singular retailer investment. Um, who might report that up to this media center of excellence, but not lateral. So um, that's what we're seeing on the brand side. There's a lot of different stakeholders. And then also as it relates to where the funding's coming from. So we talked about you know, shopper, brand, and um, 
performance dollars. So a lot of it has to do from my experience in, in where it sits in the organization, where the dollar is coming from, and how that reports back. Yeah, and I'd love to add on to that because I think it's also because not all retailers are created equal. They all don't have the same placements, their capabilities differ, and it's hard to compare apples to apples. So you might have um, a benchmark understanding on how the retailers are doing, but it's just really hard to compare them because they're all operating very differently. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that's why the 61% is so high because as an agency, a lot of what we're asked to do is kind of bring together multiple various data sources to try to have that unified component. Um, and as Bernie mentioned, they're all different. So, but it's a great question. And then just the last one here. So um, Janine talked about the future considerations. I just wanted to feature and focus on in-store tactics and data monetization. You're going to hear data monetization a lot today. <laughs> Warn you. Um, and then Britt is going to uh, walk us through what it means from an in-store and out-of-home perspective later. So we just wanted to um, let you know that we're thinking about that with future considerations. And we have a session later today. I'm sorry if I miss this at the top. Who was surveyed? What was the survey? Who was surveyed? Um, so the results that were in there and here, um, all the results you'll see today, it was 300 brands and retailers across the US, UK, and Canada. 